Hey all, welcome to another hands-on exercise. Uh, in this one, we're gonna be creating a data table, just discussing a little bit about um, how the data table variables work. Uh, so that way in a later in the later modules, you guys will kind of understand uh, the creation of the data table and whatnot. So I'm already logged into our Genesis Cloud um, org. All you have to do is scroll down to architect. Under architect, you'll see data tables. Go ahead and click on that. That'll pop up uh, where the data tables are. Obviously, I have a test one in there. We're going to go ahead and create another one just so you guys can see what it looks like. Uh, when you first when you first create it, there'll be a name. Uh, I'm just going to put you know test data table in whatever name you guys um, are going to use to test with. Put that in there. Uh, the division. Obviously, if you guys have a few divisions and you have one specific for testing uh, with your you know with your business, uh, select that one. Otherwise, it just defaults to to home. Uh, the reference key label, this is the one, this is what uh, information we're going to be submitting uh, in order to pull back fields. So this reference key label is going to be that first column in there. Um, usually it's the DNS, uh, at least for a lot of the data tables I deal with. Now, obviously others are different. You know, you could have Q in there, whatever it is. Whatever the, the key you're going to use to submit to the data table in order to pull back information, that's what, that, that's what goes there. Uh, I skipped over notes, but notes, obviously, if you want to put something in there that... Uh, that helps you remind helps remind you of what that's for. Uh, feel free. So there are different fields. Um, there's boolean, in, integer, integer, uh, decimal, and string. I use string most commonly. I think a lot a lot of people do, but there are reasons for using the other ones like boolean. I use that as well. Uh, decimal I probably use the least. Um, but for this one right here, um, I'm going to base it off of a few things, and I'm just going to select different ones that are most used. That way you guys get an understanding for it. So the first one I'm going to go ahead and put string. I'm going to name this string for an example, main menu option one. Uh, and the reason I'll show you when we, uh, or I won't show you, but I'll, I'll, tell, I'll tell you why I'm using that. So let's say you have a menu that you have in your call flow. And based off of certain information you're pulling back from data table, you want to be able to reference a variable right away um, based off of that in order to uh, make this a little bit better. Uh, and, and that way you can change this uh, within the data table. You won't have to update or republish uh, the call flow. So I'll, I'll show you, um, I'll flip over and uh, into the uh, into the call flow. Uh, that way you guys can kind of see, but main menu option one, there is no default value for that. Uh, main menu time thro time uh, timeout threshold is gonna be my next one. So I'm gonna do use that as an integer. And so that way um, what's gonna be required there is just a, a number. And so let me go ahead and main menu timeout. You know that we do have, obviously in the call flow, there's a default where you want to time out. This is more used around, like, let's say I want to do something with this um, as opposed to just, you know, it's going to send it to voicemail or whatever. Um, let's just say that I want to uh, do something different with it. So my default value, I'm going to put is three. So that way, whenever somebody creates one, another entry, it's going to default it to three. They'll have to change it out of that. Uh, next one, Boolean. So this is a good for true false statement by like you can see here, if you check that box by default, it's going to be true. And I'm gonna go ahead and put um, customer payments. So that way, if it's true, that means there are customer payments. Um, if it's not true, there are no customer payments. Let's go ahead and add a few more. I'm not gonna add decimal um, on the uh, on the resource center, Genesis Cloud Resource Center, they'll explain that a little bit more. I'm gonna put another another string here. This is gonna be the customer payments right here. So customer payments, and let me go ahead and rename this other customer payments. Customer payments enabled. That way we, you know, it's a little bit, it stands out from this one. So customer payments is gonna be the payments that we're gonna be putting in there. And I'll fill, I'll fill a field out so you guys understand. And then I'm gonna put another string in too. And this is gonna be data payments. So after I'm done with that, and obviously if there's more fields you can create, go ahead and, and create those fields. Um, let that, uh, I'm going to end it here just so uh, I think we created enough. Let me go ahead and save enough to be able to uh, do some testing off of. So uh, there's the test data, da test data table. Obviously, there's no rows. So let's go ahead and add a row. Uh, and this is available on the administrator more so than, um, than anything else. So just keep that in mind, the differences between where architect comes in and where the administrator functions come in. Architect is really building those flows and taking and using the data that's been uh, created from the data table and, and implemented. 
Um, this is really an administrative function as well as a few other things. Um, just putting this in here so that way you guys all know exactly what needs to happen. So I'm gonna flip over to my architect real quick. Let that go ahead and load. I'm gonna put main menu timeout in here. I'm gonna put my Nolan test queue. I want it to be three, the customer payments. So I'll show you how what we're doing. Ready for a different one. Oh, I'll do that wrong. So let's just go ahead and put that in, 0 0.00. I'm gonna pipe separate this so you can kind of see it here. And then I'm gonna continue on. So these are the payments. Obviously, if you have a data action and you know, you're gonna have a CRM of some sort, maybe that's where that lives we're not going to be putting this data table but let's say you're a small bin sized business this is how you're operating you're putting these this information in here for different things this is just how you're going to do it um and then let's do on the last one we're going to do uh pipe separated payment dates and i'm associating the first payment with the with the first date and so on so let's go ahead and get that together pipe separate that one and then the final one so there you go. We got that. I'm opening my uh, inbound call flow here, here real quick. Obviously, we have um, another name for it in a different in other modules. Don't get it confused. This is just me uh, doing this. So I'm going to go ahead and use this number. So there's the 188. I'm going to go ahead and put that here. So I'm putting the plus sign. Um, sometimes that's what what's needed um you don't have to always do that i just do it as just a uh, form of habit and now you can see now we have our first row so flipping over uh and taking that data table and being able to do stuff in this um that is where that it, it's pretty easy it, it's not so hard to, to do but once you get that created once you add that start adding that data you'll be able to come over here and you can sign to see if you go and flip over to architect go into your flow hit the edit button Let's go ahead and pull in one of the data actions here. So there's data, not data actions, data table. You're going to go ahead and click and drag that data table look up right here. You see, I already created one. I'm just doing this so you guys can kind of see. Um, you cannot select multiple data tables at once. You have to select one at a time, pull the information, select another one, so on and so forth. So let's go ahead and select the one I just created, the test DT. You can kind of see now um, there's an option to start putting variables. In the found outputs, it's automatically to to, going to default to no output. Just going to switch that to variable and all of these, and then we'll start filling this out. So I'll show you. So there you go. So our expression is the DNS. You can kind of see what I did here, the flow.s DNS right here. Um, so that's the variable we're going to use. Uh, you can say I, I used it up there too, but that's the variable we're going to use to input information. So now it's gonna take um, this out output right here that I've kind of, well, not output, but the, the variable that I've assigned to that DNS, and it's gonna submit that to the data table to pull back this information. So let's go ahead and um, you can kind of see right, what I did down here. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and flip down here so you can kind of see it. But I, I created my own variables. So that's how you're gonna be able to do it and create it to how you want. Um, so like this for option one here, um, create it to how you know it's going to be down the road. So, you know, um, <clears throat> excuse me, for example, there's that flow.main menu option one, flow.main menu timeout, flow. This is a Boolean, so I had to, I added a, a lowercase b, outstanding credits, flow.customer payments enabled. That's that, uh, that's that true false, or that's the, that's not the right one. That's the true false here. <clears throat> I think I switched these around. So let me go ahead and actually, I'll show you right here. So flow.customer. Payments enabled. And add that B in there, oh, not the BB. And then flow dot customer credits. So you can tell, there's the Boolean for true or false. There's the last three payments, that's customer credits, and then the payment date. So now we can go through and we can reference that. Now, there are two different ways of doing it. You can add task dot or flow dot. Flow dot allows it to be used throughout the entire flow. So you can kind of see I have two reusable tasks here. It allows me to then reference that flow dot mm timeout from the route call here that we have or transfer call. Um, 
I'm going to reference it in the in the Nolan test queue here. Um, that's where I'm referencing that, and that's why I have that there. Like the last three payments, I'm referencing. referencing there's that float out B customer payments enabled equals true. Um, that's the the one that I'm using for there. Had I um, made that a task, it's only available within this task. Um, so that's the the difference between timeouts and payments. It allows you to, or not timeouts and payments, uh, between flow and and task. Now it allows you to for flow, obviously they use throughout the entire. Uh, entire call flow that you have going on here. In task, you could then reuse that a few times. So you could put that task.mm option one here and check for something. And then you could go to another data table in another uh, in another task and use that same variable and, and call it from there. Um, now using multiple data tables, so there's, we did the first data table lookup, right? And we, we, pulled, uh, we pulled the information in. Now, if you want to do a second data table lookup, typically what I'll do is I'll put the second data table lookup in, in found um, because I'm not found in, in failure. Um, usually I'm going to set some kind of default information uh, and then relook it up to make sure that uh, to make sure I'm getting some information because usually what I'm using is I'm taking an output here and inputting it into the data table, the secondary data table to pull back more information. Not really, I mean, there's a reason why you could do that. You could put the information all in one data table, um, but look, putting it in a second one allows maybe you have another call flow that's gonna, that's gonna look at this data table for that same information, but doesn't need the information from the first one. That would be a good reason on why uh, on why you'd want to have separate data table lookups. Um, hopefully that helped uh, in just the basics of adding fields, um, adding variables to those fields, and then calling those fields later. Um, like I said, like any time before, if there's questions, feel free to ask them. Uh, I look forward to seeing you guys in the next hands-on. Thanks.